The gestation period of a whitetail is about 200 days, depending on a few environmental and biological variations. This has been an indisputable fact for more than 50 years. What was a hidden fact for the past 50 years was that multiple bucks could father twins or even triplets. Since this research came to light, the commonality of the paternity scenario has been heavily debated, until now. It's now an accepted fact that up to 25% of the fawns born per season have dual fathers. Prior to 10 years ago, uh, no one thought it was possible that a white-tailed doe could be bred by two different bucks when she came into estrus. Well, we now know that's possible through some cutting-edge research that's been done in the state of Texas. In 1999, uh, Dr. Randy DeYoung and a number of colleagues down there uh, were actually working with a uh, uh, deer that was in a big enclosure, and in the process of all of that, they were able to do DNA, and out of that whole study, discovered that roughly 22% of twin fawns were sired by different fathers. So we now know that when that doe comes into estrus, more than one buck might possibly be doing the breeding. As we've discussed in the past, uh, it is very unlikely that there's going to be one or two dominant bucks doing all the breeding. Uh, one thing to consider is that Usually family units of does all come into estrus about the same time and if you look at the way uh, the breeding process occurs, a buck is going to tend a doe for a period of time, sometimes several hours. That gives an opportunity for another doe that uh, is coming into heat to be bred by a one and a half year old buck, a two and a half year old buck or some other inferior uh, buck that's in the area. Cases of multiple paternity are actually quite common in the animal kingdom. We know this happens with animals like black bears, canines, and even wild turkeys. Now, a lot of people compare deer to elk. Although they are the same biologically, that's about where the similarities end. Deer and elk are actually all members of the deer family. But elk, unlike whitetails, will actually have harems. One bull will have a harem of cows and he will service all those cows during the rut. Whitetails do not do this. What we know in studies from Texas and Michigan is that a whitetail buck will be, a mature whitetail buck, will be the father to about three fawns every year. On the high end, it might be six fawns. So this gives you some idea on actually how much of the successful breeding is done by a mature buck. In 2005, I had a unique opportunity to see if Dr. DeYoung's research could really play out because we have a research facility in western New York on our farm. Uh, we've got a number of whitetail bucks in there and throughout the course of the fall we had one particular mature whitetail buck that was king of the hill. I mean there was no doubt about it. No doubt who was going to do the breeding. And throughout the fall, even though I had other mature bucks, uh, they pretty much kept their distance from this guy. Well, when the first doe came into estrus, uh, the dominant buck, the one we thought was gonna do all the breeding, actually quartered this doe, pretty much ran all the other bucks off. And in early November, I actually photographed this buck breeding the doe. And he bred her twice one morning. And then around noon, uh, things got pretty interesting because one of the other mature bucks, was about a year and a half, two years younger than the other guy, uh, kind of decided he was going to change things. And the big mature buck was with the doe. Uh, the lesser mature buck started to move in. Uh, a chase ensued. The big dominant buck chased the other mature buck off. They went into a, a tangle of bush honeysuckle, and man, I could hear a fight. I couldn't get close to it, couldn't photograph it, but I could hear it. And it, within a minute and a half, two minutes, it was over with. And I figured, well, the big dominant guy, he's going to come out of that brush pile and he's going to be the winner as I thought he would. Well, lo and behold, he wasn't. And the lesser mature buck walked out the winner. And I thought, boy, this is going to get real interesting now because 
there's going to be some interaction going on with some of the other bucks and sure enough there was. Uh, this lesser mature buck approached the doe. Some of the other bucks tried to uh, intrude. He ran them off and then for the better part of that afternoon uh, the lesser mature buck that won the fight actually bred the doe twice. And so at the end of the day I thought man this is going to be an interesting example to, uh, to follow because when this doe has these fawns, if she indeed has twin buck fawns, I want to be able to see how personalities shake out, how they look, how they act as these animals, uh, as these animals grow over. In the spring of 2006, the doe that had been bred by two different bucks uh, sired twin buck fawns. And at birth, they looked alike, uh, they acted alike, there wasn't a whole lot different. And throughout that summer, when they were from birth to about eight months of age, you really couldn't tell them apart. Uh, they didn't show any difference in size, and their behavior and their mannerisms were pretty much the same. But then when they got to be a year and a half, and they sported their first set of antlers, you could start to see differences. Their facial differences uh, were there, uh, their antlers were different and I started to say, you know, uh, you can definitely see some of the traits of their fathers, at least I thought I could see them. And so as I kind of crept through that first uh, uh, autumn when they had antlers, I thought, you know, I'm going to watch this close just to see what kind of behavior they exhibit because this is going to get interesting as we go down the road. Between one and a half and two and a half years of age, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that these two bucks definitely had the two different fathers. And we actually called the one buck, buck number one, and the other buck, buck number two. Well, at two and a half years of age, uh, buck number one had all the traits of uh, his father, which we call buck 1A. And buck number two had very much similar traits to the other buck which we called buck 2a and so to kind of separate these two things were coming together and though I didn't have the ability to do a DNA test on them all you had to do was look at these two deer, two deer and say there is no doubt in anybody's mind who the fathers were. From a behavioral standpoint I'll kind of break this down and, uh, so that it's a little bit easier to understand, but let's take breeding first. Uh, buck number one, sired by buck 1A, and by the way, buck 1A was that big dominant buck that lost the battle uh, when uh, the breeding took place with that doe. But buck number one was very much similar to his father. He kind of threw all caution to the wind. Uh, very aggressive, uh, didn't have any problem chasing does or any problem chasing other bucks off and he even exhibited some of that when he was uh, two and a half years of age and sometimes I thought man this guy is going to get himself killed by some of the big older bucks. Now buck number two was a little bit different. He was kind of shy. Uh, his uh, facial features were such that you could definitely tell the difference between him and buck number one. Uh, he was timid uh, though there might be some chasing going on when the breeding went, uh, took place, he was kind of the guy that was last. Uh, he wasn't leading the pack, he was just kind of going along to see what would happen. And so his traits regarding the breeding aspect of things were pretty much similar to his father, which we called Buck 2A. And so you saw a lot of things starting to play out here. He didn't show a lot of aggression yet, but he, uh, uh, he was certainly different than Buck number one, his twin brother. What I find really interesting about this aspect of deer behavior is the number of multiple paternity fawns that are the result of breeding by young bucks, yearling bucks, bucks that are 18 months old. What's fascinating about this and what we've learned through scientific research is that a yearling buck will account for about 30% of next year's fawn crop. That's a deer that's 18 months old that is taking part in that much breeding. In unbalanced herds, herds in areas with traditional deer management, that figure can be as high as 90% of next year's fawns. 
Now as far as rubs and scrapes go and their behavior when they did that, uh, buck number one, because of the fact that he threw all caution to the wind, he was very aggressive when he scraped. He did a lot of rubbing. He did a lot of scraping. He wanted to leave his scent almost everywhere. And that was also a trait that his father had. And his father, again, was buck number 1A, the one that was the big dominant buck that I thought was going to do all the breeding. Now, buck number two, he was a buck that was, uh, he scraped, he rubbed, but boy, he didn't do it anywhere near as much as his twin brother did. And ironically, that was kind of like Buck 2A, which was his father, the one that won the battle and won the breeding that doe in the afternoon of that uh, frantic day of breeding that I photographed. And so you could see these traits play out. And not only that, but physically you could see it. Their bodies were very much like their fathers. Uh, though they were twin fawns, their faces didn't look anything like each other. And when you couple the fact that they looked different and looked like their fathers and their behaviors were different and very much like their fathers, uh, it was pretty easy to conclude that though they had the same mother, they had different fathers. And so all of this played out to show me that this research that was done by Dr. DeYoung and quite frankly has been done by a lot of other people now, uh, really shows what can happen in the wild. And to kind of recap things, most of this research shows that in about 20% of the cases, you're going to find that that white-tailed doe, if she has twin fawns, one will be sired by one buck and one sired by the other buck. And so I think it's very interesting as you go out there and hunt each fall and you see a doe coming through the woods with twin fawns that there's a high probability that they had different fathers. Identifying a whitetail on a person's property is tough when the whitetail's young. Take a year and a half old buck. Those antlers could be anything from a spike to an eight point or 10 point rack. So what I look for when I'm identifying a year and a half old whitetail is for individual markings on that deer. You know, does it have three white feet, two white feet? Does it have a double throat patch, a, a odd shaped throat patch? Does it have a bump on its nose? I'm trying to look for identifying uh, qualities in that whitetail that'll separate from the others. Now once a whitetail gets to be two and a half or older, normally that rack is going to be the same configuration. It's going to gain mass throughout the years, it could gain points, it could even lose points when a deer goes from four to five sometimes or even anywhere in that age structure. It could drop from a, a ten point down to a nine or a nine down to an eight. So what you're really looking for is the shape of the rack as well as where the tines are coming and the lean to the tines themselves as well as all of those facial or body markings of that individual whitetail. You know, once you get used to doing it, it's fairly easy to do. You know, trail cameras are a great way to identify an animal and then the next year to see that same animal. So where does this leave you with your deer management program? The first thing you need to do is recognize that bucks of all age classes will sire fawns. This is healthy, this is diverse, this is what the herd needs. As long as your herd's adult sex ratio is balanced, this will ensure that all does are bred on time.